Hello, greeting from KNTV. I'm Julia No. Today we have a special topic. What I'm going to talk about is the Spring Revolution Conference held in San Francisco on July 28th. The leading organizer of the discussion was Dr. Mimi Wimbad, including young people and Bombay's families. The reason why I chose to talk about this topic is that among the topics. Dr. Mimi Wimba spoke about the war has seen that the political movements that are currently involving throughout Myanmar are in a position where they are in a very successful joint attack. I have heard statements pointed out that if women and young people can participate in decision making and political policy making in this move. There will be more opportunities, more choices, and have more options for the communities. I have watched the entire videos of Dr. Mimi Wimba event discussion. After I watched that video, I will talk about that all I got from her speeches about some of the points I want to present, and I also hope that I can give young people strange. Who need support in this situation, and the main purpose is to support our revolution through this video. Here's a disclaimer: I am not a particular expert, and I will only present and discuss about this how I see on this event from my own perspective. Please watch until the end. So let's get started on this. First. I will introduce with Mimi Wimbad biography. Who is she? Dr. Mimi Wimbad is an expert in U.S.-Myanmar relations, Southeast Asian security, and socio-economic development. She served 28 years in the U.S. Army and have held various positions in multinational corporations. She has been involved in numerous advisory roles and. Has contributed significantly to her fields of expertise through research, teaching, and publications. So, where was that event was held? This workshop held on July twenty eight, two thousand twenty four, by the San Francisco Bay Area Myanmar community took place at the Bamis Community and Culture Center in Union City, California. This center serves as a hub for the local Bamis community, offering various programs and activities to support cultural preservation and community unit. They invited to all the San Francisco Myanmar families to this workshop, and many participants were attend to this event and discuss their different visions together with Q and A sessions. Dr. Mimi Wimba was a good orator and gave many speeches to encourage the public. This event aimed to foster cultural exchange and provide a platform for the Bamis community to engage in discussions and activities that promote their heritage and address community concerns. At the beginning of the speech. She said that the time has come for the youth to come forward. This is the time to show up then, and Myanmar Gen Z youth are the most important. What can we pass on to the youth? She said that the youth must also be included in the policy making process. Also, the main point she emphasized is that we have we have passed the tipping point. However, the end point has not yet reached. But we have even passed the tipping point. So she said she proud to be being a Myanmar because we have reached this point with our own strength, our people support, powerful strategies with capabilities. We should be proud ourselves. Others will say that it is impossible to overthrow the army, and no international aid will come to help us. She said that she is proud to be Burmese because we have come this far by fighting our own to show the world that we can do it. 
although she can dress quietly in Hawaii, but she is one of the prominent female leaders who continue to lead the movement for the Myanmar Revolution. This is the path she chose for her country. She continued, We are going to get rid of the methods that didn't work before and we have to do more of the things that have been successful and worked before. You want to learn from what you did wrong before? We had so many things that didn't work, but that's fine. But don't blame them for it. This revolution is new and no one knows how it will turn out. We are all shaping our history together. That's why we studying the revolution with our own style and innovation. She said that they had come together to achieve this. We fought against the military dictator with our own strength. She pointed out that Myanmar young generation can make more movements with their innovations and creativities in this revolution. As for our Gen Z youth, they did all the technical support on the front line and in the back line every day. They are the true hero. Yes, that is true. Also, we need an extra boost to get from the tipping point to the end point. If you think about where you can get this extra boost, you can get it from women and young people. We can see that women do not have a place in our decision making and policy making seats. Take a look at your organization. She also said if you don't have half a women in your group, you don't have the optimal team. According to research surveys, 65% of women have been working on the ground since the spring revolution. So these women must be given opportunities and places. Therefore, we must give opportunities to these women in such places so that um, if men and women work together, an organization can become smarter. Uh, we must do what we can. We have not utilized all the human resources that we have very well. We have children and we have young women. And if everyone is included, it will definitely be an extra boost to move forward. In the middle of the discussion, she emphasized the importance of working together. She pointed out that the people who are winning in Myanmar now are because they are able to work together. They have to work together through many difficulties. She said that if we want to if we want them to work together, we must show cooperation ourselves. If you don't cooperate, you don't have the right to tell others to cooperate. I also like this one very much. We have to lead by example. Sometimes when we cooperate, we will have various difficulties despite our differences. We must not forget that we have a common purpose. There is only one common enemy to focus on. We have common goals, so focus on the common. Forget about the difference for now. Forget about the differences for now. For focus on strength. Focus on positive. Yes, that is the best thing that I have ever had. So also, she also highlighted about that we all know that NUG have so many weakness, but let's focus on their strength and positive. Forget about the negative for now. We shouldn't focus on their lacking points. I also agree with her. They also been trying to hold this situation steady and they have come through with many challenges. We should understand each other. We should understand each other. If they can do it, fill in from where you can. A teacher of mine once said that there is no rest period in the revolution. Yeah, that is true. We are the people who decided to do the revolution based on our own convictions without any arguing as to do so. Sometimes, when I'm tired of doing things, 
I think back to it. We've come this far. We've paid a lot. As long as we're stay alive, we're going to fight. We're not going to give up. Yeah, we're not going to give up. After about twenty minutes of discussion in the event, I found more meaningful and worth remembering knowledge. One of the main points she said was, "The one who can convince the enemy to dry his side." Without fighting, is called a real soldier. It is it is possible to win without fighting. For example, in previous years, Maui from Kirini Learn convinced the defectors to join him without harm. This is called making the enemy a friend. She also asserted that this type of operation is a really effective and successful operation in our revolution. Then she added that since the international aid is not coming, we should cooperate in any way possible. The result of cooperation, understanding, especially when trust is built, will be very important in the post-conflict. If only in 2022 someone from outside came to help us, we will win the war, but not the peace," she said. Because we suddenly would not have had a basic mutual understanding between between us. The fact that we have come this far with our mutual understanding and and uniting as brothers like never before is a huge and and significant factor that cannot be compared to anything this revolution has given us. At the end of this. Discussion. She wanted to say that we have to shift our message to Indonesian communities. She advised us to let the Indonesian community know that we have ourselves. We can fight on our own, and we can do it our own. And if only they help us a little more, we can go farther. So we need to know that we can make it through. Don't you want to march to victory with us? Together, we will make a new history. We will march together in our own battle. Look what we have done. It is not impossible. It is not possible without cooperation. And she said, cooperation is going to be the basis for building peace and building federal democracy going forward. We are cooperating, and we have better strategies and power, people. Power of people, people are with us all the way. So up to this point, she has energetically discussed the current state of the revolution with Myanmar families. In the next part, I will share a question that a young woman asked in Q and Q and A section. So, the first question is that. There are many students who have lost their way because of the current politics. There are many students who are doing CDM, and there are many university students who are in the forefront. Since they are so lost, please give me some advice on what to do for their education. Her answer is that if you talk about education in Myanmar, they often see that you have to get a degree. That is not true. Even though they are not on that education path now, they are now learning life lessons. It is true that the CDM students actually lost their way. They followed the revolution and took risks. We want to tell them that the experiences they gained during the revolution are really valuable experiences. They should think that. They are learning life lesson from the various situations they have personally encountered, but Indonesian students are only like only read and learn about the situation from books. They will become. This will become our own experiences. These experiences cannot get in anywhere. We cannot buy revolution. Yeah, Doctor Mimi Wimba say that. 
She can confidently say that these will be great help to them. Another possible way to do this is that we have to collect these self experiences. We need a lot of young people who can lead our future. My opinion is yes, because we should study from this situation. How can we take advantages from this current situation instead of focusing only on things that are not convenience, failure, negative wars, or difficulties to face? No, we should try to. We should try hard to take advantages of all the opportunities. You get from wherever you we are. We can stand still. We can stand still, and we can rest. We shouldn't take a rest in the middle middle of the revolution. So the last question I want to tell you is the question asked by another young woman. It's a very good question. When these battles are successful. There will be still be a generation gap, and there will be differences. This time, how can Generation Z and other generation come together to make Myanmar better? Then Dr. Mibi Wimba answered this: Yes, there are many differences between us adults and today youth. So, the adults cannot understand the youth. And the youth also cannot understand the adults. However, young people have more capabilities than adults, and they can lead with new ideas and innovations. If we combine these with the experience and wisdom of adults, plus the energy from youth with innovations and aggressiveness. We will be able to do a lot. What's important here is that in times of crisis, we have to we have to reject many limited traditions and cultural practices in our country. If we want to cooperate with with each other, with our gener with other generations, she said that now is the best time to get rid of unhelpful cultural practices. When we use all of our human resources in this revolution, this this unhelpful cultural practices can block the way to go to our endpoint, and we don't have many options when we can use all of our resources because of the limited cultural practices. And then we have to cooperate together. When we say cooperation or collaboration here, it is not only different people, but also between different generation. We have to cooperate between different generation. So that's how we are going to boost through the next phase. Therefore, we have to try to get rid of any unhelpful cultural practices in. Myanmar people, from now on, you don't have to wait after the conflict. You have to practice now. Then we getting ready for the next phase. So overall, but remarks underscore the importance of youth and women as catalysts for democratic change and their potential to shape Myanmar's future. So this is where I highlighted some some of the points that Dr. Mimi Wemba talks about. I hope you heard very encouraging words. The public response to the Mimi is very encouraging, and I, I want to be like doctor who can lead with courage and confidence. Yeah, that's all. That's it for the discussion today. Thank you to my brothers and sister who watch and listening till the end. Hope you get some informations and courages from this video. I will be back with more videos. Have a blessed day.